I'm a Michigan kid. I was born in the Lower Peninsula, but spent most of my weekends growing up at our family cabin in the Eastern UP. It was there that I fell in love with the outdoors. Fishing, hunting, hiking, boating, and a little more fishing. <laughs> when I was 12, I started asking the what am I going to do when I grow up type questions. I asked my dad what he did all day when he went to work. He was an electrical engineer. And although I don't recall exactly how he described his job to me, I do recall at the time, to my 12-year-old brain, it sounded really boring. <laughs> electrical engineer was off the list. Soon after that, Dad brought home a college catalog from Lake Superior State University and flipped to a page titled Fisheries and Wildlife Management. I distinctly remember glancing at it and saying, wait, wait, wait. You're trying to tell me that I can go to school and take a class called Fish Ecology and Fisheries Management? You've got to be kidding me. You can't tell a 12-year-old kid who is obsessed with fishing that he can go to school and study fish and not expect him to jump all over that opportunity. To be honest, at the time, I really had no idea what ecology or management even meant in that context, but it didn't matter. That was enough for me. I was hooked. I started reading more about natural resources management and conservation and quickly decided that I wanted to make a difference in my home state of Michigan. For me, that meant setting my sights on becoming a fisheries biologist for the Michigan DNR. And yeah, I really was 12 when I made all those decisions. I stayed true to the goal. I went to Lake State. I earned a fisheries management degree. But my education required a few extra stops that I hadn't planned on when I was 12. My path took me to graduate school at the University of Minnesota, where I earned a master's degree in conservation biology. I then went north, all the way up to Alaska. I earned a PhD in fisheries from the University of Alaska Fairbanks. Near the end of my time in Alaska, I finally found the job announcement that I'd been waiting on for 14 years. I started as a fisheries biologist for the Michigan DNR in 2008 in Charlevoix. I almost felt guilty about having Charlevoix the Beautiful be the location of my first job with the state, but I got over that pretty quickly. <laughs> what exactly do I do? I'm a fisheries biologist, but my position is a little bit unique. When you think of a fisheries biologist, you might think of a management biologist, someone who does surveys and works with the public to manage inland lakes and rivers and streams. You could also think of a hatchery biologist, someone who is responsible for raising fish and stocking fish from one of our many state fish hatcheries. You could even think of a research biologist, someone who studies fish and tries to better understand how they relate to and interact with their environment. We have all three of those types of biologists within DNR Fisheries Division and all do important work. But my position doesn't quite fit into any one of those categories. I'm a fisheries biologist in the Tribal Coordination Unit. Let me explain what that means and where that unit comes from. The land that we all know as Michigan was and is home to many different Native American tribes. Their culture is embedded in Michigan's history. The DNR mission statement highlights our commitment to the conservation, protection, management, use, and enjoyment of the state's natural and cultural resources for current and future generations. One of the ways that we achieve that mission in the context of Michigan's Indian tribes is to establish positive relationships and partnerships to help ensure sustainable use of our resources. And fish are one of our most prized resources. Fishing is a large part of native culture. Tribes use fish in ways that are different than most Michigan citizens. The focus of most state anglers is on recreational use. Fishing is something fun to do with family and friends. Tribal culture, though, focuses on using fish for subsistence living or for employment through commercial fishing. Because of this, the gear that tribal fishers use is different than that of state anglers, who typically chase fish with rods and reels. Because tribes can use traditional gear, including gill nets, on a per capita basis, tribal fishers have the potential to have a larger impact on fish populations than any other user group. The state of Michigan does not have any authority to regulate tribes that have reserved fishing rights through treaties. The tribes govern themselves and they regulate their own fishers. The tribes also have their own natural resources departments. They have their own managers and biologists and technicians and conservation officers, just like the Michigan DNR. There is a long history 
of state and tribal interaction in Michigan. To be honest, it's not always been positive. In fact, it's been highly contentious at times. We have not always seen eye to eye on management issues. However, we have come a long way in the past 40 years. The fact remains that the state and the tribes share the fish populations that are in the Great Lakes. We also share an overarching goal. That goal is that we all want to see the fish managed in a sustainable way, so they will always be available for generations to come. When you have groups that have shared goals, but competing methods to achieve them, it's a good idea to establish a set of rules to which everyone can adhere. That's exactly what happened between the state and the tribes. In the year 2000, the state, along with five Native American tribes and the U.S. federal government, all signed an agreement that was issued through a federal court. It was called the 2000 Consent Decree. The Consent Decree was a negotiated settlement that outlined how fish populations in the Great Lakes would be co-managed and divided up between the state and the tribes. This was the rule book, so to speak, that everybody agreed to play by through the year 2020. Once the consent decree was signed and in place, DNR Fisheries Division established the Tribal Coordination Unit. One of the main responsibilities of my unit is to make sure that the state and the tribes actually do all the things that we agreed to do in that federal court document. I work very closely with DNR Law Enforcement Division as well as managers and biologists from the tribes and the federal government. Together, we monitor populations of lake trout and whitefish and other species. If we want our fish populations to be around for our kids and our grandkids and our great grandkids, we have to manage them carefully. We have to manage them wisely. We can't take too many fish. The purpose of the extensive population monitoring that we do is to set safe catch limits or quotas for state and tribal fishers every single year. We also recommend regulations to help keep those fishers within those safe catch limits. The agreements that we work under depend upon cooperation between the state and the tribes and the federal government. We have to hold each other accountable for everything that we're doing. This consent decree impacts tribal commercial fishers who catch fish and sell it to make a living. It impacts tribal subsistence fishers who catch fish to feed their families. But it also impacts and applies to every angler who buys a Michigan fishing license, picks up a rod and reel, and goes fishing in our Great Lakes. The system that we have established is built on honesty. We have to report what we're catching honestly, tribal commercial fishers, state charter captains, and every single angler who talks to a DNR, DNR Creel clerk. That's why I have a job. That's what I do. I wouldn't necessarily call it glamorous. It's challenging. There's conflict. At times it can be frustrating because not everyone always plays by the rules. But it's also rewarding. I do what I do and I love what I do because it matters. Without management, without relationships, without agreements between the state and the tribes, our fish populations would suffer. The agreements we have in place have allowed us to build bridges of communication and establish partnerships with tribal governments. Collaborating through those partnerships to achieve the shared goals that I talked about, the benefits of that far outweigh the occasional conflict and disagreement that arises. I care about the fish populations of Michigan. Ever since I was 12, I wanted to make a positive difference in my home state. And I truly believe that the Tribal Coordination Unit does exactly that. The natural resources of Michigan are owned by its citizens. If you live in this state, the salmon, the lake trout, the walleye, the whitefish, even the bass and the bluegill, all of our species, they belong to you. Maybe you passionately pursue them. Maybe you simply enjoy ordering a fish dinner at your local restaurant on a Friday night. Or maybe you just appreciate the sight of fishing boats on the water as the sun hangs low in the summer sky. Fish are one of the things that make our state great. And the next time you enjoy them, however you choose to do so, just take a moment to know that there are people working hard behind the scenes to make sure that the opportunities that you love 
will always exist. Thank you.